Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Meyer. Dave, you remind me of like a Greek piano. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is fabulous. Perspective, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that a good piano? Yes, we've decided. No, because it's the Greek colors, but it's also giving me keyboard vibes. It's nice. I like it. Listen, I am so glad that the summer is over so that I don't have to see pictures of everyone in Mykonos every goddamn day. Do you ever have FOMO of what a gorgeous place that is? And everyone is going there constantly. And I sang in Athens once. And so I went thinking it was going to be Mykonos. And then I was like, oh, where's the ocean? They're like, oh, it's like an hour away. And I was like, oh, this isn't like the photos. <laughs> The photos from Mykonos to me. I mean, Bye. and then I always wonder, do you all have jobs or how do you do this? Yeah. Listen, there are some friends of mine on my Instagram feed where they work remotely. It seems like they are constantly on vacation. Must be nice, right? <laughs> One guy that works in my company, I'm like, are you on conference calls from Fire Island? That is wild. Okay. That is really wild in my mind. But alas, this is the skating lesson. We are going to be discussing everything that happened at the Junior Grand Prix, at the Britannia Cup. Things are getting started. So this is this and that. If you are new here, please subscribe below. Smash that like button. Jonathan, last week on the Junior Grand Prix, you know, it wasn't it, okay? We were just, you know, we didn't have- the Yeah. Up. I actually thought, oh my God, if we if we discuss this, we we might get killed. I might not have positives to say. Luckily, this week, the level of skating was far better. Yes. Yeah. Much to discuss this weekend. Yes. But let's start with last weekend of my favorite moment of the season so far. Okay. I am really into Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson this season. All right. She's giving us JLo's Versace dress in the rhythm dance. Unbelievable. The, the outfits, outfits, dresses, however we want to call them flawless from both of them for both programs yes i couldn't believe it the deep v for him was so wonderful in the, v in the ass pants i mean he took brian johnson and just like threw him to the curb I, I, and and even even the turtleneck or the mock turtleneck whatever that was in the free dance helped like show off his line and his extension and she had the Surya Bonali hair going on and she was elegant in the navy blue she was gorgeous in the green this couple just looks expensive which an ice dance goes a long way in my opinion no she lives down the street from David Beckham allegedly okay it's expensive to be Lila Fear and, and it shows yes yeah yeah what? my lord now how about those illusions in the middle of the twizzles because this is a team that you know sometimes in the past when they did the twizzles maybe we white knuckled looked looked down looked to the side maybe we're a little uncomfortable they're we really gay because we loved yeah yeah we care we care yeah, yeah. he it's like charlie white with some edge and dance ability and all right. He usually seems rather subdued in real life. We watch them in that documentary. She does a lot of the talking. Yeah. When they do that Gaga program, and he is just. He talks with his extension. Yeah. How about where they're like in the boards and just. I wrote that down because we we saw a couple of, of teams, you know, this weekend at the Junior Grand Prix, try to play that in front of the judges area, which sometimes is a little cringe to me yes. or a little gimmicky, but the way they worked it, like it was a dance bar or, you know, or just a bar bar, it was just sensational. And it's the kind of current and modern and relevant that ice dance is looking for from what the ISU is saying, and they're giving it to us in a real way. It's not sort of cringe modern, it's current and relevant and actually cool and entertaining. Yeah. Which is a big feat. It's a big feat for this kind of stuff. And I, I just couldn't get over it. And they, he did in um, the rhythm dance, he did this like shoot back, shoot the duck into his like solo twizzle moments. And they're just starting to really maximize his sort of unique abilities because I think they're going to do that magic thing that Montreal does where I think we have a very special inherent male dancer 
And we have a very committed female who, who may not be as technically gifted at birth, but is working very hard to keep up. And I think Montreal, more than any other school, seems to know how to empower those women in that position <clears throat> in a chalk and bait sort of way. And I think they're they're doing it beautifully. I see big things Where did for she them. Find him? Like, how did she really discover this boy from Scotland? Good research. Yeah, they did. I imagine she found him in a kilt on the side of some hill somewhere and she just grabbed. Stretching, stretching through his fingertips, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, oh my God. He is coming alive this season. Yeah, yeah. Last season, The Lion King, maybe not the best vehicle for them, but that rhythm dance was really strong last season. And I get why they tried Lion King. Like it made sense to me why on paper they thought it could have been a home run. Uh, but given the Madonna, given the, you know, their other sort of pop things, this works really well. At times I thought maybe the Lady Gaga was going to get a bit too heavy, but just as I started to worry about that, they would live up with like a big move and then they would transition into another piece of music. So I, I found it very effective and very fun. And the time went by so fast yeah. watching it, I thought. You notice that Montreal somehow they have teams from even more countries than last year. They just seem to just people are just descending on Montreal. They have I Ukrainians. Know. They have ever. Yeah. Josh, I am just saying the political situation in Montreal off the chain this season. Okay. <laughs> we don't even know. They didn't need to go to the Britannia Cup. Okay. Right. Who right. even knows who, who they were who they were running into there? I don't know. But let me tell you. But we all tuned into it as a result. It is going to be between Fear and Gibson and the Italians this season for a lot of bragging rights in Europe. It's well, it's be fascinating because it couldn't be more apples and oranges because one is going to be so crisp and clean and one is going to give you that X factor that we really want the most from ice dance. I think both of those teams have benefited greatly from the absence of the Spanish teams. Mm -hmm. uh, this year. And so I think we're going to see big movement for both of those teams. I mean, I'm kind of rooting for Fear and Gibson because I find they just have that performative quality that I love so much in ice stands. Um, but of course, the Italian technical prowess can't be denied. But this is just inherently more entertaining to me. It's a performance based sport, Jonathan. It, is. And it really is. Yeah. Barbara takes all of the energy. <laughs> she sucks all the energy. And she's the performer. So, you know, I would imagine it's hard to perform up when someone's performing bigger than you ever could at the at the sides. But, you know, and their one foot sequence in the free dance, I couldn't get over. I couldn't get over how excellent it was. And like even the backflip moment. And it was an homage to Torval and Dean, right? Because they're British. Oh, but that that flip over for sure. Yeah. That had it was an homage from that had place the music written all over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it. I think they're in store for some really big things, and they seem to be great ambassadors for the discipline, because I find them talented. They seem to be solid people, and again, just giving us that old razzle dazzle that we really want from this discipline. Now we can shade the UK, right? Because let's talk about this. Oh, the new, the new woman? They find live feeds of competitions in countries we've never heard of, where the ISU was like, let's have, a, let's have a senior be there. The Britannia Cup in Sheffield, where there will be a Grand Prix. A Grand Prix. No live feed. And that same week, tickets for the Grand Prix in Sheffield went on sale and that website was crashing. They're new to the game. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Remember the late 70s, early 80s British people? This is what we need again. <laughs> yeah. I, I certainly hope Vanessa Riley will be able to make an appearance at this competition. The greatest stretch. Since yeah. Lori Parker, the greatest. I'll let her appearance. <laughs> Just to make sure it happens. Just sensational. They were just sensational. Yes. Now, a little interesting. We're keeping a side view on Russia this season. This is a very strange season as they have their 
domestic alternate universe version of the Grand Prix coming up. Alyona Kostranaya had hip surgery today. She's scheduled for a lot of shows in the fall, even though she's having hip surgery. It's unclear how serious this is. Some hip surgeries can be quite serious. Some, I don't know, but she is scheduled to do uh, a couple of shows coming up uh, late fall. And Anna Sherbakova had her knee injury. They were talking to her about university. So it's really unclear what their futures in competitive skating uh, portend. And we mean competitive skating within Russia at this point, because we don't know, obviously, what their competitive futures mean. And with that, you're going to ask, does the US team have their medals yet from the Olympics? And the answer to that question is no. And there is no uh, real update on when that will take place. Although apparently, Jonathan, there's going to be a sequel to Icarus. And you know what? My body is ready, all right? <laughs> that film, yeah. Yeah. that film doesn't show Trusova screaming at everyone at the end. It, did not do its research. Okay, that is yeah. just a moment. A moment that needs to be included in that documentary. Yes, the whole the whole debacle, the shell shock of the winner, the devastation of the pewter, the anger of the silver, the joy of the bronze. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What a journey! It was. It's just and to think it was still this calendar year. It seems like a lifetime ago. All of that. I mean, I can't wait for season two of Icarus. I mean, yeah, because sadly the story continues. Yeah. A sequel that might be even more fascinating than the original. Right. Yeah. Now, talking about Russia, Jonathan. Yes, Dave. I know we love Tukhtamisheva. I know that. Or what she represents in particular. She is one of the only skaters who ever admitted that she took meldonium when it was legal. Yeah. It did give her more speed than we've ever seen her have since. Correct. The most consistency we'd ever seen. Yeah. And again, knowing she had to hold up her end of the bargain, even though she took that. She yes. didn't just take it and get in shape. She took it and then was able to train as a result of it. So there was still a great deal of effort on her end, although via help. I mean, just watch the end of 2015 Europeans free skate and then look at the end of any of her other free skates. There's a marked difference. She was also younger. Now, what I'm curious when it comes to Tutumisheva is why do we pretend to get a new choreographer every season? I, you know, Dave, in the past, I, you know, we've talked about it, but this in particular, from the outfit to the music to the program I was like this is such rehash okay but there and, were and here's the thing. announcements about the new look and the new program and the new and then it was so much very much the same when Michelle Kwan was in her Morozov Raphael Russian era the programs were the same right I mean look yeah, although, he captured the music but yeah. she, yes and, and as a result, like something like the Tosca, although not as nuanced perhaps as Lori would have done with it, the energy she brought and performative quality she brought to the end of it was so intoxicating, it almost transcended the, the lack of sophistication in some of the earlier parts of the program. But with her, as much as a personality as she is off the ice and as much as she represents on the ice, she often doesn't bring that X factor to the ice. However, I was going to ask you this. One of my favorite triple lutzes of all time is the Tanya redo at Lillehammer. That redo of a triple lutz to me is one of the most textbook, perfect, arcing, gorgeous things. And with the exception of maybe a Gracie Gold lutz here and there, I have just not seen one like Elizabeth's. It will go down in history for me as one of the finest, finest. So I with the with a kid named Jordan. He is a Tanya mega fan. Okay. He learns all of her movements. Okay. Do you want to know what he likes about Tanya? The he death song? He thinks she seems like a really nice person. Really? Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fascinating. Because So now you know I'm friends with that Ann Burrell from, from Food Network, having done this. Yeah. 
she was, Anne was Tanya's teacher when Tanya won the show. And she said, Tanya, behind the, seat, behind the scenes, nice as could be, super cooperative, super team player, until they did like short challenge games, short competitive, some, you know, early in the show, they'll do like a, a quick challenge competition. And she was like, you saw like a switch happen. And Tanya's face changed and it became the most like intense, aggressive, competitive thing she'd ever seen. And then the minute the game was over, suddenly she was delightful again. Yeah. And I was like, that's, that's a skater. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Competition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think she loves an arm movement. I would just keep last year's free skate. Don't change a thing. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't look like she has the triple axe yet, but I, I do have to wonder, for the Russian skaters, though there is money to be made at these competitions and it's supposedly pretty good money, they're coming, they have, they have the post-Olympic depression, which is real for almost any athlete. Right? Anyone, no. Then you have someone like Chuktamisheva, she may not last four more years. It's uh, unlikely, you know, statistically. How do you find that motivation when you can't compete internationally and you're to really find it, to grind it out again and again and again? I don't know for the older athletes what to expect. Someone like Trusova, I feel like she wills herself to be the best. I don't, we have seen her do a quad lutz double axel. She's willed herself for so long. At some point, like, I, I think you're right. Like, it's, it would be hard to continue to find that motivation. And it's interesting with a culture that's very, what do they call it, ultra C element or whatever, uh, uh, focus. But right now, a lot of those ultra C competitors are gone. Right yeah. now, there is no Kostanaya with a triple axel. There is no Sherbakova. There, we have not seen Balieva. We, you know, there is no truce about uh, Akatieva suffering with her own injuries. Like. I, so maybe she, she feels like actually it, it's not necessary at the moment. Yeah, although I did, I was reading the news today and I haven't fully delved into it, but they were talking about the bonus structure of domestic competitions in Russia and extra bonuses. And I'm not sure if it has to do with just the juniors or whatnot, because the US has different bonus structures for the developmental levels. And in the past they've awarded bonuses for the ultra C elements and they were giving more uh, points to spins. It seemed like oh, that was interesting. Okay. Which may not be where Elisabetta can make up those points, but. Um, you know, in the US, like Canadians will tell you that every US girl in juvenile may not have clean jumps, but she will have a level four spin with good. And that's correct. Yeah. That is important. Well, so there's a lot of little points that will add up by the end with all of that. Now, is this something you've talked about with your friend, Tatiana Tarasova? You know, we didn't talk. No, Jonathan, okay. I have to tell you, the whole thing was funny in a ridiculous way to me. And I had so many other things going on over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> when something so ridiculous like that happens, it doesn't seem real, okay? Not. Yeah, yeah. So there were, there was think piece about how, like, do we know each other? Well, I, li listen, Tarasova has been in the hospital. She's been like traveling around. My name was said to her, that is true. Okay, Galit Chait's mother said my name to her, took the picture when I was there. Now I heard that Tarasova was there. I read the Russian press and you can tell that the Russian press will like say things without saying them, right? right. So. Part of the thing is, is that Terry had been to the U.S. multiple times over the summer. Then Tarasa became, but they kept asking her and she always gives a quote when they call her, they, she always gives a quote to the press, right? So they asked her why she was in the U.S. and she said to get her winter clothes for a woman that lives in Russia, all right? <laughs> <laughs> like really? So obviously people didn't buy that and they right. haven't cleared it up. We didn't get an itinerary of where she was. But there is, you have to remember now that Diana Davis is coached 
by Kiliakov. Kiliakov's son represents Israel, was at the Junior Grand Prix representing Israel this week. Galit Chait runs the Israeli Federation right out of the center of Israel, Montclair University in New Jersey, okay? So where I happen to stay. So uh, you have to just wonder about the different things. You have to remember that Boris Chait was at the ISU Congress, was pro-Russia. I'm just saying that I found out that Tarasov was gonna be at the rink and I was very curious. All right, Jonathan, oh. I got to the rink and like the Israeli team was swarming her. It looked like when Mother Teresa was in the streets of Calcutta. Okay, she was like with her walker and they were like, oh, like blowing kisses at Tatiana. Like it was just a scene. That was the moment. Okay. Yes, I got a photo with her. I asked how her health was. We didn't have meaningful conversation. Yeah, it's not, you didn't go out to dinner. Yeah. I also like don't have anything to say to her. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is like they make it, they've been making a big deal about Tarasova visiting the different ice rinks in Russia this summer. Like, and the kids would be like, oh, she gave us such great advice. When she was at Montclair, she was upstairs. The kids were on the ice. That's what some people saw. No, I don't know if she was taking notes and giving feedback, but it was not a Tatiana Tarasa was sitting at the boards with the oh, terrorist yeah, situation. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know. I don't know what she was doing. I hope she got her winter clothes, her <laughs> boots that friends were storing for her. She has had a house in New Jersey before. She used to coach down in Freehold. But even her comment and when being asked about why she took the photo with you, it still has sucking up to Acheri vibes. And to think that a woman in that position feels beholden to lifting up someone like Acheri, I think is also very interesting. Well, remember when she hated her a couple of years ago? Yes, I mean, I That's why I'm like, oh, this is a turn, you know? So, but... Okay, let's say that she didn't know who I was, which is possible. Like, it's yeah, of course. So when they do ask her for quotes about me, is she also just saying what she thinks she needs to say? Yes, of course. I think always. No, whether she knows me or not, what the hilarious thing is, none of it is real. It's all just the media charade, okay? which is hilarious and campy at the same time, which is how someone should read Sports Roo as the ridiculous fever dream that it is. Jonathan, but, you know, this we is the same know. website where a girl recently has said that her coach bullied her for being fat and Tarasova basically, and all of the other people that they called said- Well, she kind of was. She kind of was and she didn't achieve anything anyway. Why do we care? Like. Hello. Like, <laughs> and that's what they feel comfortable sharing. That's that's their press ready version of that comment. Anything about Nugumanova, how ridiculous it is in the press. Yeah. The fact that she hates me, badge of honor. Okay. Like, my God. Do you know why I took the photo with her? Because I knew she would take it. Right. Because they knew this is someone who would like to be in the press. Did you go nuts? Because you did like a Tarasova tribute, like montage of her commentating, okay. right? Remember I the applaud, Lula, I applaud the persona, the character, and the contribution to camp and entertainment value that she has given to figure skating. Yes. That doesn't mean that I think she's a good person. Okay. Right. Those are separate things. Yeah. I think that Simon Cowell made great television. It doesn't mean that I would recommend marrying him. Right? Like these are these are different things. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. Same great. thing. Like Dick Button, great commentator. Could be problematic. Could be problematic or prickly. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. But the passion and love for the sport and the caricature persona, yeah, well, these, are, these are important things to celebrate. Very important, okay. Yeah. Same thing, Jonathan, like, okay. Terry. I've heard of her. 
Do you miss seeing her like roll her eyes at her skaters on TV? I mean, there's something in that that is great theater. No. Although horrible from a humanistic- Horrible point. when you remember it's not just theater. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. not just theater. Yeah, yeah. But to like watch it, I'm fascinated. I'm riveted, right? No, it always holds the attention. Do I think she's a nice lady? Do I think she's a good mother? Well, I think she's a good skating mother. And maybe that is the most important thing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when her daughter posted essentially a thirst trap and then a Terry shared it last weekend, I was like, that is mothering. Okay, yeah, that yeah. is. It's uh, Chris Jennering, yeah. That's it, Diana's abs looked fantastic. All right, I was just impressed. I mean, I'll do whatever she's doing, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Veronica Gillina. Uh, Judge the Black Swan. Do you think she hears the music when it's playing? No, I do not. But you know what else? I think she could. I do, when I saw the opening, I was like, I thought to myself, okay, so she's not responding to the music. And yet I believe somewhere internally, if guided correctly, she could. I think it's in there. I think it's just not being fostered. I think Trusova is more inherently musical than Gillian. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Trusova interpreted Cruella de Vil despite a lack of any choreography. Or I she understood yeah. that piece of music. Yeah. But they she knew did. to do that. Like it was interesting, like they knew not to even almost try. So they were like, let's lean into it, which for someone like that, I think was probably the right move. Jelena, this was sort of an idea of let's pretend it's something it may not be. And then of course for her regular arsenal not to be there, then same thing with Trusova when there were falters, it just sort of revealed what else was lacking also. I mean, we know that Jelena has a mother, right? Who wanted to coach at Team Dudbaridze at Hrustalny. We know she's a favorite of Plushenka. We don't know yet if she has that inherent personality that we love in Trusova so much. I, I don't know. What I think of when we, we've seen her compete is like, we know this is a name that we should seek out to make sure we watch. Yeah. But often the results don't yield that just- I prefer to watch her- It doesn't. I prefer to watch her in three to five second clips on Instagram when she's jumping. Yeah. Rather than actually skating to music. Yeah. She's a good Instagram skater. <laughs> looks great on the gram. Yeah, <laughs> great for stories where it's consolidated. In real life, I, I don't know. Last year, was it Love Story that she skated to in the blue dress? Also, no connection to the music. Yeah. Anything could have been playing. Right. Her back doesn't seem to like respond to music. You know how like someone's shoulder, like they really tell the story. Open, yeah, 100%. None of that. And again, it would be a different story. This isn't even a truce of a story then where at least she's delivering on some technical content which keeps her in the mix. It's interesting because she chooses not to interpret or is not being encouraged to interpret, but then often is faltering on the technical content, which if that's your calling card and sort of the only thing you're able to offer, when it's absent, it becomes particularly tough. Yeah. No. Now, you know that when we criticize the Russians, they do say that we are jealous. That is their number one go-to. And I will admit- Americans, like, again, I don't, I'm not saying an American skater is better. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that this is a, a young woman that I believe can offer more, should it be encouraged. And I, just as a fan of the sport in general, border free, would just like to see her pursue. I will admit that I am jealous of Arseny Fedotov's hair. That is an impressive, like, fade and yet bang situation. I once took a picture of him to my, uh, like, uh, <laughs> said, uh, make me. What do you call a female barber? Uh, like, she only cuts men's hair, but she, Ruth. Can oh, I no. guess just a hairdresser? My hairdresser, yes. I took it to my hairdresser, her barber shop, and she said, baby. What you want? And I said, I want to look like this kid. <laughs> I mean, what, he's like 11? <laughs> like, come on. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the bang situation with the fade and the, 
it is impressive, all right? He has charisma, he has swagger. Look, I know that a Terry hasn't had a boy that didn't survive without a back injury that ended his career, but what he's giving us now, I'm enjoying. It's and, bringing me joy. And okay. the essence of the jumps, for, for the criticism we have of other skaters from that camp, he seems to transcend it because he seems to be so open. The chest is like nice and broad. There's right out on the ends of the quad toe and the quad sow had a fun exit. Like, I don't know. I thought, and the spins, I'll be them, maybe a skosh slow, hard to tell on the screen, but they hit clean positions. They were easy to understand. There was something so easy to get about the quality of his skating here. The clean lines, the crisp movements, easy to spot the levels. Something I don't always see necessarily from that camp. It's triple axle, not the best, but you know what? But better than I anticipated. Yeah. We enjoy what he's giving us right now. Yeah. Man, West Side Story. He was the winner of Ice Age as a kid. He's one of the people. He is for the people, okay? Uh, he just has that swagger and he's lasted, I mean, in Team Two Bereeds of Years, he is like a 90 year old, right. old yeller. I mean, he is a veteran of yeah. uh, all of this. And so. I thought the West Side Story edit was good for the most part, a little bit in the Maria, they cut like the English sentences midway and it doesn't really make grammatical sense anymore but overall just just a nice a nice quality i just i really enjoy him the thing that happens and we'll talk about this a little bit on the junior grand prix as well is um a slight spread eagle epidemic we're experiencing this season where a lot of people are choosing that as the move for climactic moments but with the butt out and like not totally the killer position of it it sort of loses it. I wish they'd almost go for Ina Bowers or something else that was more attainable because you know that was someone else that spread eagle moment in that same time, you know, with the music would be such a moment, but they sort of miss because they're not quite fully committed positions, I find. My hips are not naturally like a spread eagle person, but that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate one. Same thing like an outside edge Lutz, not my strength, but I admire it in Korean skaters. Oh, in fact, all the more to enjoy it. And yeah, yeah. Whose spread eagle do you really admire? You remember Jonathan, do they say Kassar? Kassar, yes. I mean, geez, Louise, he was practically like parallel with the ice on it. I mean, of course, we love a Jeffrey Puddles. We love the Brian Bortanos. We love, you know, all these moments. But it's the commitment to the extreme sort of like straight edge that they cr can create, but so many seem bent in the middle on it. I'll take you those spread eagles and I'll raise you a Paul Wiley. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello, of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> he had more energy in that spread eagle than his triple axle. And maybe that was part of the problem, but you know what? But the audience will respond to it as if it was a triple axel. And that's the thing. You see some of these moments sort of come and go. And I was like, oh, that could have been a really huge moment. Yeah. If you committed to the position a little bit more. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the Junior Grand Prix this week. Who, who stood out to you? What'd you like? What'd you oh, like? the Czech ice dancers. Yes. Let's, let's begin there. Because Mrazikova and Mrazik. Or Mrazik. Listen last year for junior worlds because they bombed nationals but this this you know i like them tall and this was a team that was not afraid to take up space mm -hmm. every position they made was huge and extended and finished and especially um their opening pictures were just incredible and i thought their their um what, what do we call them the pairing elements or their teamed up elements were in particular that opening rotational lift in the free dance i like fell on the floor it was just amazing some of like the solo one foot moments or twizzles were slightly less than some of their lifts and spins and things like that but overall just a team i couldn't get over and in the the rhythm dance she practically was in a floor length gown and i was like quite nervous at first that she was, it seemed just right for tripping or getting in the way or something like that, but it just managed it so beautifully. And their one foot 
the moments were just sensational, perfectly held poses, the wingspan. I, I just couldn't get enough. I and couldn't. he's a real, he's the flower of the team. He yes. is really the flower. He was giving us some Lewis Gibson deep V action in the free skate, yes. Yeah. I, they are really a nice dance team that made a lot of people take notice. Yes. I thought that they were really- Such presence. And there was like, an, like, an, like a circle of energy around them as they just went anywhere. Yes. And they went everywhere on, on that ice. Huge patterns, fast patterns, big extended patterns. I just couldn't get enough. No, he didn't win, but Minkyu Seo from Korea. What a me, moment. What a moment. Both programs. Yes, he had problems on the triple cell and the double axle in the free. He doesn't have a triple axle or a quad in the program yet, but his overall technique, his skating skills, his spins, he has enough performance for his age. It just seems like he has enough of the ingredients that you really look for. Yeah. Skater to go the distance. And yeah. he's quite younger than the winner, um, Nozomu uh, Yoshida from Japan. I think I butchered that name with my own handwriting, but uh, I, I thought that I thought that Miku Seo really had just the right ingredients to yeah. be a really, really top skater. And his toe jump technique was so fantastic uh, in both programs. I was blown away. I thought he really has it. The costume, I didn't understand with the music. I didn't know, but- Yeah, at first it looked like in the in the free skate, like it was doing one of those Michael Buble open yes. sort of like bow tie things. And then you look closely and it wasn't actually that because I, I thought that doesn't go with this music. But then you look and it was sort of like an open piece of chiffon that was not meant to maybe look like that. Um, but when he holds out his movements, which he doesn't do always yet, but I feel is totally on the way because a little bit, I would see that check out, especially before some of the combos. Um, and then he was doing the transitions, but it was a little like, okay, I know I'm doing this to get the jump, but then he'd turn around and then do a more choreographic moment and he sold it like crazy. So, you know, it's there. And I think will only continue to come out more with time. With the right choreographer, he could be impeccable. His back spiral was one of the best moments of the whole program. Oh yeah, yeah. He had a great unicamel. I mean, he has just a lot of ingredients to be really spectacular in the future. Yeah. And I really think he is one to watch. I really, really, really enjoyed his skating. Now I will say that Nozomu has really great knee bend and technique. His quad toes were really fantastic. Looking at him at his age, looking who he's up against, the only thing I think is really missing from his skating is that showmanship that we're used to from the Japanese men. Yeah. And he's against such strong skaters. I don't know in his own country how he will be able to break through without maybe a couple more quads because Shoma, Yuma, Kazuki, they are really, really spectacular all around skaters. And I feel like he was lacking a little bit in the performance, but he really has a uh, stunning technique and really great. Well, so what I hope happens is what Japan is good at because they have so many tour and show opportunities available. I would hope they plug him into as many things as possible because I think some of that, again, is only taught through the experience of all of those audiences. Yeah. And even at the Junior Grand Prix, you know, it's Ostrava, like, the audience, you know, isn't quite the same as it might be if he were to skate at a Japan Open or or some tour over there where it will be more people and inherently you have to perform to them. Yeah. So, but I mean, he. But Minkyu at thirteen already kind of shows it's right there. Yeah. I mean, some people have that more than other. Everyone yeah. has something, right? But this is. Yeah. Now, I have to say, Mao Shimada's free skate. Yes, there was a fall on the quad toe. Her landing position on that triple Lutz, Ooh. which she back Charlotte into, was like the moment of the program for me. That's the refinement in her skating. She has everything that is just now, right. A logistical question, because we saw uh, both her and Ikura, Kushida, both there with Mia Hamada. Mm -hmm. 
So I guess I didn't understand the status of things for Mia Hamada. It was under my impression she might not be allowed to coach, but obviously brought two juniors to this, this competition, so clearly is. But in the absence of a Terry, and Mia is obviously making a run for it, people are talking more about her on social media now. And, and that's been, it's been in, the, in the background for some time. Right. Uh, I remember someone said, you know, she's the Japanese Terry. Someone said to us like moons ago. A Terry shows you that she's a Terry, but Mia Hamada could be considered more dangerous because she doesn't necessarily show you. And that scares me more. Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See, there are people that don't like that we tell you what we think, Jonathan, but I'm more afraid of the person who doesn't tell you what they think. Of course, yeah. The one who's showing you unapologetically who they are, they really believe in what they're doing. The other one almost must know something's off. Like who, who's, who do you consider like some of the scariest people in skating? I would say like Tammy Gamble. Not like... The quiet, the, un, the unknown. A Terry, a Terry has no filter. Yeah. Yeah. So I then, Tammy you know, terrified. Mm. That to me is like now S Mia Hamada, the happiness that is the faux cheerleader in her. Yeah. Remember how she used to get like right up in Satchiko? <laughs> like right before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what was so interesting, especially early on, is Satoko was the serious one in the kiss and cry, and Mia Hamada looked like a young, exuberant young child with her excitement over scores and things like that. So again, sent to the public a totally different message than must have what, you know, what was happening behind the scenes. Yeah. But I, I do think we have to look at the injuries, the trajectories of the skaters, Marn Honda, Rika Kihira. I, will we see Rika compete this year? I, you know, I'm still kind of waiting to see on that. So I don't, I don't know. I, I, well, and I, again, I was thinking as I watched Shimada, like, you know, we knew because of Marin Honda's incredible just skating skills in general. Obviously, Satoko, like, dreamy, dreamy, dreamy. But does that come from Mia Hamada? Or did they just happen, or did Mia Hamada just have the eye in being able to pick those skaters with those inherent abilities? Because I would say with both Shimada, but more so with Ikura Kushida, some of them, I was like, I wonder about some of these squirrely landings. I wonder mm -hmm. about them. And some of them are artistic and some of them slightly less so. And I wonder how much is encouraged by Mia Hamada and how much is just given to Mia Hamada. Um, skaters, do you notice they seem to have stronger edge jumps than toe jumps in general? We used to have obviously Satoko with the really nervous toe jumps that right. almost like missed the, the toe pick sometimes. Mao Shimada, dear Lord, does she know how to hold an edge? She did that triple flip double axle, axle sequence and then into the choreographic sequence. She's on one crazy deep edge almost that whole time. It was so, so impressive. And unlike what the other women here were doing. I have to say, in terms of the rule changes, adding the double axle on the end of things, I enjoy that so much more than like a triple double double or something like that. Like Two little doubles that stand still. Yes. Yeah. I really, to me, there's something so satisfying to seeing someone like land a triple step and into the double axle. I really enjoy it. What I don't enjoy, the spins with the difficult exits. To me, I just, uh, that is a real flop for me. I, I understand. Those are the bullet point errors, I think. You know, by doing that, we saw, we see just like clumsy and sort of unattractive things that must just be complicated, but everyone's gunning for the same bullet point. It's like the arbitrary roles in gymnastics where, Jonathan, they really came up with the role where they were like, now you have to turn and stand on one leg before you run into your tumbling pass instead of two. And you're like, why? What? What? Yeah. But now you've created this uniformity in it. So yeah. now everyone stands on one leg and looks like an ostrich as they run or a flamingo. So what end, you know? Yeah, I agree entirely. So, but I really, Ikura, I like that she has some spunk to her. Yes, she's tall like you like. Uh, she could stretch out a little bit more. 
Yeah. Skip to your favorite piece of music to give to a young girl, Samson well, and Delilah. Not only that, not only was it Samson and Delilah, which is very adult content, but in fact, it was that like same crazy lady that did the Gabby Dale and Carmen. It was like, it was like a drunk Celine Dion or something like, but not half as talented trying to do mon coeur. I just couldn't, I just couldn't with it. <laughs> Gabby Dillman has also done Samson and Delilah, icon. All right, I really like Ikura though. She just has a little spunk to her that made me want to watch her. The whole yeah. program, I was just, I was entertained. Yeah. She had two triple triples off the top. I, I really liked her. And in the short, uh, the Aranuez, again, it's whoever is working with them hears the music because certain pieces of the music were responded to with, with appropriate movement. So, so we do always know that from the Mihamada skaters is I know that attention is given to where the phrasing is in the, in the piece. What's your take on giving cats to a junior lady? Uh, Jonathan, I said that it wasn't my favorite and people were acting like I was brilliant. I, I, I was like, all I said is not brilliant. Okay, no. just not, listen, I don't like the musical cats. I, no. I don't. It would be weird if you did, Dave. It would be weird if you did. You couldn't picture it, right? It's just, it's not my jam, okay? No. I don't know whose jam it is. My sister and I, I was in high school. We first saw it in London. We were almost as to leave. We were laughing so hard because it just became this phenomena by accident. And now we all think we're supposed to see it because it's great. And then you see it and you're like, this is absurd. I mean, literally Halloween costume sort of quality. Now, what I will say about uh, this- You used to have a great TV commercial where they were all <laughs> on uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, the rising up on the manhole cover. Uh, come on, but- uh, you ever watch- da, 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 da. Are you a Kimmy Schmidt person? No, no. Okay, there was one episode where they realized like no one's actually in Cats, it's just volunteers from the audience that never left. <laughs> it's like this whole like funny little episode they do. But Min So Kwan, like what she has is this incredible like Fosse-esque sort of flexibility in her shoulders and arm movement. So I have to say, even when she's opening and being a cat, even though I don't care for the vehicle in which they're choosing to showcase it, she does have this incredible flexibility and movement in her shoulder joints that is outrageously impressive. I just think they could have used a different vehicle to do it. Now, it did have her projecting more than some of her competitors. So was that the point? I she mean, does project very well. She has grit, like a Hughes sister. She was has great jump technique, and she's a competitor, which I respect. Yeah. I didn't like the program. I like her. All right. Yeah. Maybe her leg on the camel, not as much. But you know what? She's. I, I wrote that great. down. The free leg on the camel. Yeah, yeah. But but the choreography kind of masked that. It seemed more in character that that leg was bent and maybe turned out. If the point of this piece was to merely be a stepping stone in the overall picture of her career, and the goal was to get her performative and more showboaty and razzle dazzly, it did work. I just think you could have done it with something better. But it it if the goal was to get her moving and projecting, they have succeeded. I will say, I will forever remember an Ice Dance team at Skate America in 2009. They did a Cats program. There were paw prints on the costume. They were in orange and black and they clawed at each other during the program. I, you, I can't unsee it. I can, it's burned in my memory of like the biggest dream. <laughs> of I always say there's like those moments when like you're embarrassed to like skating if you were to watch something with someone else and they'd be like, oh, this is the sport you're obsessed with? These people yeah. go like this to each other and you're like, well, I like it in spite of that, not because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember them. I don't remember anything else from <laughs> <I'm West> in <laughs> America. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Yeah. They really stood out. They really made a moment. With so. the cat ears. I mean, that was like extra. That was quite extra. You know, she had commitment. And you know what? Jenny once skated in a Lion King program where she was dressed like a cat in a Halloween oh, night. Wasn't that an exhibition? That was, and it was still something I like to embarrass her about. She's the same <laughs> age as this skater. I'm just saying, like, you know, maybe, maybe everyone goes, oh, it's cute. 
Jenny doesn't seem to think Hearst was cute this many yeah. years later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it still stings. I mean, one of the things is also this girl is better than cute. She mm -hmm. showed us that with her modern dance ability and her, the flexibility in her upper body movement, especially. She can do something cooler. And it's a question of how much do you want to dig into your junior quality? How much do you want to dig into that age? And how much do you want to transcend it? transcended and doing like things we've seen like Big Spender and House of the Rising Sun, maybe too far, but there's somewhere in between wearing cat ears and doing House of the Rising Sun. And I, I would just feel as a junior, my goal would always be to show you I really belonged in seniors. And this sort of dug in and leaned into that junior quality in the age. You know what? But we remember her. We do, we do. Not boring. And she wasn't cheesy. The music was cheesy and she moved quite well. Now, Mia Callen, she could have used some of that cat's energy. She, you know, she has two good quad toes. Last year, we were watching her practice on Live Barn because she was practicing with Melissa. We were really checking to see what was happening there. And it was interesting because they would run the back-to-back -back quads at the beginning of the program over and over and over again. Well, and that's what works. But the components have been completely ignored. Yeah. And remember, I told the mother, I said, look, Arthur is going to fire Jeremy and Massimo six months. You pick them up. Arthur did fire them. They did not seem to pick them up. These skating skills have not been worked. And the reason you could tell that there's something amiss in her training it's not just the fact that she can do two quad toes, but can't do a crossover with the push under, because that is glaring. On the forward crossover, she does not get the second push finished. It's the fact that she's under rotating a triple loop and a triple lutz. And not just, not just at one competition, this has happened at many competitions in her career that she will do the two quads and then the easy triples look like they're just not practiced. And it's not that she can't do them, it's the hyper fixation of getting these for the points. But it's, it's that the overall picture of the skating is not being well-rounded. And this is obviously a huge talent. Yeah, right? that's the thing. It's interesting because, especially as we look at the Russian model that was set, it was clear perhaps that her and her team, whatever that means, they saw that formula and they go for that formula. Her opening ice thing, she beats the leg, she does the twist, she's, she's mimicking a, a different school's training without maybe some of the assistance that that team also had, but it's it's not working because the judges aren't aren't going with it. They are not seduced by the quads. They know that the lack of skating skills is going to hold it back. And quite frankly, like even so, the quad toe double toe that she did it had a gawky quality to it as opposed to an impressive quality. The quad toe that she landed after it looked like it hurt on impact. It, it's kind of one of those, and we have seen this come from some schools in, in Russia in particular, that the landings, it's almost like they, they fold in half and they, I just feel all the bones receiving that impact and it makes it so unenjoyable to watch for me. So, cause obviously this is very, a, a talented young woman, but I don't, I don't see this working, even though they seem to think they have the secret ingredient to do so. And skating has overdone a naughty. We've overdone to build a home. Like all of that era, we started to realize last year, that era of music is, by the time Amber Glenn is using your music, it's, it's done. It is five years too late. Yeah. <laughs> five years too late. If yeah. a Tammy Gamble kid is using your music or wearing your dress, it is like five years in the past. Right. Um, this piece of music, I think, is done. I think anything that Papadakis and Cicerone used, uh, Happiness Cannot Wait, that is done. This minimalism music, it's just. And it's done so well. Yeah. So, yeah. The, to build a home, the. Wood kid, they they've all just been beaten to death in the last. Send a mixed message because if you're going to people that just dig in your heels and say we're quads, squads, quads, do Cruella, do go that route. Then don't even pretend you're going to give us something else because it's when you put that music to it and we see that you don't respond to it that it becomes even more glaring. Where if all you want to do is the quads, own it, just do them. I was skating a session last week and someone was trying to take a video for their junior test. 
and they couldn't get through the opening jumping pass, they must have played circles 15 times, which is based on experience. <laughs> Going in circles. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Wasn't that one of the books, like Katarina Vitt at a show that they were filming, she had to redo the triple toe like a hundred times, finally got it at like 11 o'clock at night or something like that. Yeah. I once saw Nancy doing that for the share program at the Caesars for the women in uh, Atlantic City. And Nancy was later in her career at this point, she was going to do that double axel. I mean, she took some hard falls when she was skating to share. She did that opening pose in the chair. I mean, she did. All right. Okay. She was in it to win it. Okay. That was, it was impressive in its um, commitment. All right? Okay. <laughs> now, Mia did commit a cardinal sin where she missed a jump and smacked the ice as she did it, which we enjoy the grit, but that's not really uh, something. Time and a place. Yeah. Yeah. And she doesn't seem to have that natural performance. I think that they really are going to have to work with her on that. Because I think it seems so tunnel visioned on, you know, the blinders are up to just achieve those first two jumping passes. Yeah. And then again, I didn't lose it because of those first two jumping passes or win it, lost it because of all the other. Yeah. So, so I, I wonder how that team progresses because she's sort of been stuck in this circle for a couple of years now. She was the exciting young woman we had that could do those quads as we grapple with a, what's worth it and what's not, but it's not, it's not really elevating. This is when you have to change your approach. You have to look at who's on your team, who's directing it, what are you doing that's wrong. It's, it's, it's time. This was a wake up call. Right, yeah. no Russians here. And still out of it, despite landing technically two quads. Yeah. But again, I'll forever remember when you had the sports psychologist on where she said, if you don't change anything, nothing will change. And, yeah. and it sort of seems like they're sticking to a plan, but I think maybe the plan has to adapt with as, as it progresses. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of two years too late for changing yeah sport moves fast you gotta it really does and and she could have made a move several years ago and it was funny because again you knew what was there but she was down in like eight nine ten in the junior ranks when clearly this is a talent that could be much higher yeah so yeah we will see you know what we'll see what happens she's still one of the good talents in the u.s so yeah we are seeing that Brady is training with Benoit. This is, she wants to win nationals this year. Gracie got Skate America. The season is picking up a little bit. It's, yeah. we the have, Gracie assignment was very exciting to see and well-deserved. Yeah. Well-deserved. She did the work. She delivered. She was rewarded. I, I really like merit-based choices like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm... You know what? This season, it's it's picking up. I think that we're going to have a lot of new stars, and yeah. uh, and we're be... ready for them. Yeah, we it's... welcome. Them. Yeah. yeah. What was your moment of the week? Oh, I'm gonna say. You know, yes, it would be easy to say like Fear and Gibson's just clothes alone. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna go with the junior check dance team because for me it was really exciting to see someone new. Although I know that they are not brand new, but to me to see them at this level and that kind of delivery here really excited me about a discipline that on the junior level, I might've zoned out a little bit on and it totally pulled me in and I was very excited to see it. I'm gonna have to go with Mao Shimada's jump landings and oh, the last third of Fear and Gibson's free dance. Just the real. Starting at the barrier. Yeah, starting at the barrier. They like stretch it out, yeah. When he's doing those like, Kneeling squad, uh, yes, hot, yes, all right, loved it. And then you as the audience know, you're like, get ready, it's coming, it's coming, they're getting ready for something, and then they just deliver it. Oh, also, our good friend Igor Lucanen. So, as soon as there was an Elvis movie, we knew there, with Baz Luhrmann, we knew, okay? Baz Luhrmann is like a, the gift to skating that haunts us between Moulin Rouge for 20 plus years, uh great Gatsby um, when he had Elvis we were like oh dear god okay it's coming 
Igor's daughter is doing Elvis next year. He already, he watched it. He fell in love over Labor Day. Don't give that man a day off, all right? He is just it's too inspired. You know what? Another moment in my week was seeing Kolyadaskate again, because we saw him at the test gates too. Uh, the Nutcracker again. And again, that man can do no wrong for me. Even when not all his full arsenal is there, I just love watching him move. Oh, love yeah. it. I know. Hold an edge, it looks sexy, everyone. Bye.